One year ago I decided to try this new building mode called Axiom, and for that I chose to transform the end main island. We can say that the result was... Mm, decent. But now that my skills as a builder and with Axiom have improved greatly, how much more epic can we make this end island transformation map? Get ready, because this time we are going bigger and better. When I did this a year ago, I used the project as an excuse to learn the Axiom mod, and for that I set myself with the challenge of building it in a day. So to make a proper comparison, we are going to do the same. We are going to have a time limit of only 3 days to make a new and improved version of the end island. Alright new world, let's see where the end is. Yep, I think it's here. It's day 1 and we are going to begin with the shape. The idea is to have a cool looking platform where we can build on top. But first we need to get rid of the dragon and the vanilla island. The only thing that I will keep from this mess is the central platform portal. Now yes, using the shape tool we can create a cylinder. And this step is crucial because if we don't make a large enough platform then it's going to take forever to fix later on. So just in case, let's go with something huge around 300 blocks. We have a platform but now I realize that if I want this to look epic I need a more solid plan to start off. So I grabbed my notebook and started sketching some of the ideas that I had in my mind. Yes, my drawing skills are awful, but it's part of my process. I focused on the top and profile view, adding hints to elements that aren't very clear, like the dragon. And after a few attempts, I arrived at a design that I liked. The plan consists of having multiple smaller islands surrounding the main one in a circle. I don't know how many I want, but we can tweak the amount later on. Now we need to start working on the 3D shape. So using the lasso select and choosing negative values, we can stand on top and start drawing shapes for the terrain. It's a bit hard to see what's going on, but trust me, once I fill it in, we are going to see what I'm doing here. Ah, uh, yeah, we have a bunch of Endermen. The idea for the main island terrain is to have tentacle looking shapes twisting around each other. So with the elevation tool and using height maps, I started creating spikes of different sizes and widths. Now, to achieve the tentacle look, we had to select the entire thing and use the modify tool with the twist option to twist everything 45 degrees across the vertical. We did it one time, then we smoothed it out, and then we did it again and again and again and again. The main island is done, well, the shape at least. All that's left to do is rotate it upside down, and we even made a hole in the middle so we can later put all the important stuff like the dragon. I really like the way this is looking, but now we need to work on the other smaller islands. One by one, I repeated a similar process of building spikes, twisting and smoothing. So there we go, the base terrain is done. Before the end of day 1 I decided to do a quick painting of the terrain, and I wanted to use two color palettes, one for the top and another for the tentacles underneath. First, I had to add another cylinder of a different material on the top using the metabol modifier to ensure the shapes blended properly, followed up by some manual adjustments with other tools like lasso select, melt and smooth. So then yes, we can paint the top with a very intricate noise pattern and a palette that goes from blackstone all the way to amethyst to purple blocks and back to basalt. If you want to achieve a noise pattern that looks like this, all you need to do is increase the octaves and lacunarity over here under the noise painter tool. With the top looking epic and magical at the same time, I used another palette, this time going from blackstone to gold ore and endstone. The auto shade operation was a lifesaver for this, I just placed a light source in the center of the island, and that way I managed to get this very cool looking lighting effect on the twisted terrain from underneath. Of course, I then repeated the same for all the other islands, and that's the end of day 1. So far, everything was going fast and smoothly, but on day 2 I had to slow down. When I do these transformations, I like to think on the gameplay and the ways in which the build could be used to bring a better player experience. But until now, I only focused on the look of things, so I had to step back and bring the bigger board to come up with new ideas. A key part of the gameplay on the vanilla end island are the crystals that we need to destroy before defeating the dragon. So the first idea was to replace the pillars in which we can find them with larger and more intricate towers. The designs for the towers were not a problem, in fact, they were looking very cool. But when I tried to locate them where they had to go, I realized that we didn't have enough room. The scale was too large. So back to the drawing board, the second idea was to combine the stars that I was going to use as decoration on the first draft and turn them into star-shaped rooms, holding the end crystals on their center. The designs were simple to make. I just created large and weird decahedron shapes and then carved them out one by one with the lasso select. I did some shading with a nice palette and rescaled them when needed to make them fit around the islands, and then painted them with light blocks as a finishing touch. I also reutilized the discarded tower designs, tilted them over and buried them on the main island, so now they are an interesting ruined place to explore and find loot during or after the fight. 
In total there are 8 rooms, which means that as a player you have to go around the smaller islands shooting at the end crystals from inside. But right now the islands are not connected, which means that you'd have to bridge over. And we all know how boring that is. So to fix it, I designed some thick chain links and used the path tool in clipboard mode to quickly create chain bridges between each island. Something that I never liked from the end island in Manila Minecraft is that you can completely ignore the dragon and go straight to... Huh and go straight to the outer islands to acquire Elytras, which sort of defeats the purpose of having a final boss. So for my take on the main island, I want to have a protecting barrier, some sort of magic seal that stops you and the dragon from leaving the island. I will symbolize that barrier making use of Minecraft Galactic Alphabet. Thanks to the text tool from Axiom, I can write something with that font and then use them with the path tool to position the letters on a circle surrounding the islands. We will paint them with frog lights and magenta glass to create the protective spell, and that marks the end of day 2. We've made a lot of good progress and tackled the hardest part of this build. However, there was still so much more left to do to bring this end island transformation to the quality level that I seek. So on the last day, it all came down to the detailing. The islands are looking great, but empty, so we are going to build an alien forest inspired by the chorus plants from the outer islands. To do so, I created different designs making use of amethyst crystals attached to each other and floating. And they look amazing. Then with the stamp tool we can very easily place them in large quantities around every island. The idea for this is not only to decorate the surface, but also to make it more difficult for the players to traverse it while they destroy the crystals or fight the ender dragon. There was too much of the color purple everywhere, so to mix it up I added some cyan color plants that complements it very well and also helps break the repeated patterns of this alien looking forest. Now before finishing, the final version of this map will be available on my ko and Patreon, so you can get the map along with many others and support the channel and my content in the process. Yesterday I focused on the gameplay, however, I forgot a very important thing. How are the players going to travel from the small islands to the main one? As it is right now, they'd have to bridge over with blocks. And that's a problem. I thought about different ways of going around it, building broken down towers, debris floating around for them to parkour, more bridges, but nothing seemed fast or fun enough. That's when I remember the end cities. What if I infest this area with shulkers? Perhaps the players could get hit on purpose to gain levitation and reach the main island. However, after a few tries, I realized how unreliable and dangerous that was. Instead, we are going to create a platform over here Nothing super fancy, just something like that. And with my little knowledge of command blocks, I will set up an execute command that runs only when the player jumps over them. If this is working properly, it should give us the levitation effect. That is a solution that is both simple and efficient, except that it's not working. Uh, what if we make it always active? Oh, okay. Now, we just need to make the duration long enough to reach the main island on the top and then add more of these platforms and their commands around all the islands. The last thing that we need is a place for the dragon to rest until the players come to challenge it. For that I decided to create another magical barrier with a seal that protects the dragon until you destroy every single end crystal from the outer rooms. I used a similar technique to what I used for the outer barriers, but this time I gave it a couple of shiny yellow rings because this one is a much stronger barrier. After all, it's a centerpiece and it is protecting the dragon from reckless attacks. With that and some more extra towers broken down and floating around, we can call this transformation completed. With the island updated, we can now compare it side by side to the previous one that we made a year ago, and yeah. The new one is so much better, they have some similarities and I still really like both of them, but the new one being way larger allowed for more interesting details and shapes that overall make it look way more epic. Also the thought process behind it was different, so what do you think? Axiom has been such an amazing tool this past year and it has definitely revolutionized the Minecraft building community, allowing everyone to improve their skills and become better builders. I'm excited to see where things will go from here. But in the meantime, we just gotta keep building and learning. I hope you enjoyed this video and this new transformation. This has been Calvin and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.